Greetings. So one of my hobbies is tracking the latest in health and longevity, which is increasingly relevant for me since I turned 65 this year. One of the hot topics in that field is something called hormesis. It's just the idea that uh, short-term stress uh, can be good for you. Uh, often stated, uh, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Now, as opposed to chronic stress, which is bad, a small amount of short-term stress allows you to, produces uh, beneficial results in your body's cells that allows you to handle long-term chronic stress better. So examples of good hormetic stressors uh, would be uh, exercise, hence my hiking up the hill, uh, fasting, uh, saunas, and the topic of this video, uh, um, cold exposure. So growing up in Montana with the last name of winter, I had this peculiar habit that developed me a bit of a reputation. They call me Mr. No Coat. So I lived a few blocks from high school. So by not wearing a coat, I could skip the trip to the locker and sleep in a little bit longer. Uh, this amused my classmates quite a bit and they would often take bets as to whether I'd be wearing a coat on those sub-zero degree days. So little did I know that this would eventually become a health trend. So Wim Hof, AKA the Iceman, has popularized cold therapy recently, specifically promoting ice baths. So I tested the waters using cold showers, and then I graduated to a garbage can full of freezer ice. And after that, I convinced myself I could handle it, so I upgraded to a proper cold tub. I Amazoned a $700 bathtub, collected a bunch of plumbing parts, drilled a one inch hole uh, at the base of the tub, then used a low profile drain adapter trap so that I could use just the existing tub footing and not resort to an elevated platform. And then I bought about 15 cans of $4 foam from Walmart. By rotating the tub several times, I was able to completely fill the voids with the foam to maximize energy efficiency and minimize summer humidity condensation. Then I used a one inch vinyl PVC pipe, which you can see under here, as wrapped with this for, again for insulation to minimize condensation. Uh, so it goes from the drain through this pump into this uh, chiller, which is commonly sold for hydroponics to cool water. So it goes into this 10 inch filter. I uh, insulated with neoprene rubber, again, to minimize condensation. Uh, and it goes into the tub. Uh, this Z-Wave switch uh, is controlled by a home assistant. And turns on the pump and the cooler and then I monitor the temperature there's a local thermometer here but also a home assistant monitored Yolink thermometer so then home assistant will control the temperature to uh, about 48 degrees is what I currently can handle so I'm gonna turn this off, Let's keep the noise down. One of the other things we have wired in here is a flow sensor. So I can tell when the filter is getting under this, uh, this 10 inch pleated 40 micron uh, pleated filter will last me about two months, which is surprising given that I don't take showers or baths, I only do cold tubs every other day. So that flow meter is monitored by a ESP device, which monitors both the flow rate and the temperature. Sends that data to home assistant over Wi-Fi using the MPQTT protocol. Then I can have home assistant tell me what the temperature and flow rates are. Hey Google, activate what is the cold tub status? Notice, cold tub has been on for 0.9 hours. Cooling rate is low at 0. Temp is plus 53.8. Flow is at 155. 
So here's a plot from Home Assistant showing the cold tub temperature on the top and the flow rate on the bottom for about a week. You can see it gradually warming up and then every other day the chiller kicks in and gets it back down into the high 40s. So here's a plot showing the just the flow rate for a couple of months. You can see how it gradually drops as the filter gets clogged. And then in the middle, you can see when I replace it with a new filter. So one other thing I have that ESP device doing is using its capacitive touch sensor hooked up to this wire. I have it automatically turn on the pump whenever I get in, the water level goes up. So I have that data on the ESP display, but I also have it echoed on this custom web page where I have time of day, uh, cold tub temperature, cold tub flow, which is zero now, but let me turn it on and you can see that flow rate go up. Uh, we also have a timer that shows me how long I've been in the hot tub. I used to have this device, which uses a stopwatch, but a lot easier just to have the tub turn the timer on and off by itself. You can see it. the sensor goes out of the water. I get out of the water that the timer then will pause until I get back in again. And you can see the flow is up to 187. With a new filter, the flow is at about 300, and by the time it gets to below 100, that's about when it needs replacing. I usually spend about three minutes at 45 degrees twice, alternating between the sauna and the hot tub. So about every two months, we empty it out with some clean water in there. We do it by turning the pump on, turning that valve on, and then putting the hose out here. Turn that valve on as well. And to fill it back up, we use this handy dandy hose to sink adapter it through the same hose and let it fill up without the pump on. It takes about a half an hour, which is as long, about the same amount of time it takes to empty it with the pump on. To improve energy efficiency, we use this standard one and a half inch foam board from the hardware store. Nice and light, and just slide it right on in the off hours. Uh, I also have a um, ozone generator here that bubbles up ozone there and I have a couple sensors that I bought for monitoring ozone levels. This video is getting a little long so I think I'll defer that for a future video if there's any interest. So we'll wrap it here on this one. Thanks for watching.